For on this valley they say you are going I will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say you are taking the sunshine in this episode of Stories from My Life, Bud Van Alstyne recounts growing up on a small farm in rural Ontario and persevering to become a high school teacher, a home builder, a husband, a father, and eventually a farmer again before finally retiring to write novels and play bridge. My name is Sharon Turner, and I'm pleased to be the host of this series. We caught up to Bud in September 2023 at Greenpoint, his off-grid lakeside home on Fagan Lake, just north of Maberly, Ontario. Yep. My grandfather had the misfortune of falling into a, a scrub. Uh, they were going to scrub the floor and they had this scalding water and he fell in it. He was still in diapers and he got badly burned and cooked and, uh, in his back. And uh, he grew up a cripple. So his right leg was more than three inches shorter than his left This leg. is your grandfather uh, you're talking about, yeah. yeah. He lived out near Kingston, uh, near Sydenham. So he grew up uh, back in the, he was born in 1860 and he grew up. And uh, no way that he would ever be able to afford a farm and that sort of thing. So. The only way he could ever manage to get property was to migrate back into the north end of Frontenac County. And he did, he moved up to Crutch Lake. So my dad grew up, born and raised at uh, Pine Lake near Plevna. And they grew up in poverty. <clears throat> and uh, how my grandmother raised nine kids uh, and her husband, a cripple, is a, a challenge. I admire her immensely. I never knew her. She died before I was born, but uh, she must have been an amazing woman. For sure. So anyway, when Dad grew up, uh, he w wanted to do well. He was a very ambitious man. So he went to the bush, and uh, two years he went north and worked in the bush up there at, uh, near uh, north of, north of Duliskard. Mm -hmm. He met my mother in 1922. She lived at, uh, up near Vanacker, near Denby. He met her and, in 1922, and her family moved north, lock, stock, and barrel in 1923. Got up to New Lisker and established a home there, just in time to have the, that massive forest fire that wiped out New Lisker. Oh they spent a night in, in uh, Lake Tomogamy to escape the fires. And uh, anyway, my dad went up there the second year and married her in February and moved back to Charlotte Lake. Everything was going fine. Then in 1929, the depression hit yeah. and dad's whole, that whole operation went into the tank. Uh, dad was looking for a farm and there was a man at Maberly that had seen dad as a boy working at 11 year old, 12 year old. He saw him working. And he remembered him, and he looked my dad up, and he said, I hear you're looking for a farm. And dad says, yes, I am, but I have no money. And the guy said, you take over the mortgage, and you pay on the principal whenever you can, and uh, just pay the interest on the mortgage. So that's the way dad was started at Maberly. And I, um, I had um, four brothers, five brothers, I'll get it right, yeah, six brothers and one sister. And I was born in 1936. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother had worked too hard. Uh, she had s seven kids in six, seven kids in, in uh, s seven years. It was a tough life. And working hard, mm -hmm. desperately trying to make money to, uh, you couldn't sell anything, you see. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> when she got pregnant with me, uh, she was having s sick problems and she was sickly and, uh, as the pregnancy went on, she got weaker and weaker. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what month it was in her pregnancy, seven or eight. There was never was any talk about a preemie, so I presume she was near. Must have been close to term. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was born on November the 13th, 1936. And my mother lived for uh, five days. 
uh, after that. I was a caesarean section baby. So we grew up on the farm there at Maberly, and um, it was a very busy going concern. We had cattle and horses and sheep and pigs and chickens, and anything that you could raise and make a dollar on. Mm -hmm. And uh, as there were these six kids older than me, and so there was lots of help, and everybody was expected to do, to pitch in. Dad had an expression, uh, if you were around there, if you weren't doing something and everybody else was working, he would say, could you make yourself generally useful? <laughs> <laughs> so he was instilling work ethic in all We milked and we separated, we sold the cream and we fed the skim milk to the calves. And we had a neighbor up the road who had a new baby and they had no cattle. And uh, they bought milk from us. So my job every morning was to take a five pound honey kale of, of fresh whole milk up to my neighbors. And how old were you then? I would have been seven, eight. Young, yeah. And uh, yeah. they gave me a dime for this milk. And that was the first money I ever made. We were all good workers, uh, hard workers. And that became, see, our day would start, if you're milking cows, you have to milk at six in the morning, six at night, 12 hours apart. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have problem with your cows, the others and so on. So we'd start at 5.30 in the morning. We'd have to go and get the cows, bring them in from the pasture, bring in the horses, because we're going to be using them later in the day. And then we'd all pitch in and help milk. And we all would sing as we milked. Really? We're all singing country songs and milking. And the faster you sang, the faster you milked. <laughs> Do you remember any songs that you sang? Well, most of them were old railroad songs, yeah. you know, like uh, number nine and number 97. Yeah. And they're old sad songs. They're always old sad songs. Of course, songs. that's yes. country music, yeah. yes. And later in life, I got to thinking, you know, there was dad's kids at various stages of their lives and with mother's family. He lost his wife. And here was his kids working, milking, singing their hearts out. What was that like? Well, our first school, we went there for six years. Uh, it was across the bush from our place, a little over a mile. And uh, it was number, SS number four, South Shorebrook. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we walked across the bush, rain or shine, winter, summer. There what was, was the distance you were A walking? little over a mile. A mile, yeah. yeah. Across the bush, mm -hmm. over open pasture and bush, and we had to cross the neighbors to get to the school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there was grades one to eight there. Only about a dozen to 15 kids in the school. So eight grades, some grades with one, some with two, some with three, some one with four. And um, went to school there. <clears throat> for those six years. And there was one teacher there that particularly won my heart. She, I was in grade two or three, and she was 80 shanks from Charlotte Lake, and she taught us to sing songs. And uh, that was, to me, the first time I ever sang a song in school. Anyway, after that school closed, we were bust to Maberly for two years. That would be for grade seven and eight? Grade seven. The eight. older grades. Yes, yeah. yes. And after that, then there was probably no high school around here. So. No. This high school was 12, 14 miles away. So you had to go. So when I started high school, I had to go. We rented a room in Perth. And um, I went in there, and there was about 15 of us in that rooming house. There were workers, and off I'd go. And, on Sunday night, my dad would drive me in with the 29 Durant, and I'd have this basket, and there'd be a little roast of pork in there, and some eggs, and mm -hmm. a loaf of bread. And I had a bill at the store downtown, so I could go down and put stuff on the bill if I needed it. But yes. the, the school was almost incidental. I, yes. I didn't enjoy the school. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really interested. I was more interested in working and having a decent meal. And you must have been tempted to just walk away from it all. I very nearly quit in, grade, in grade 10. Yeah. I decided I would quit and I talked to Dad about it and he, was, he said, you're just throwing it all away. Mm -hmm. And so in grade 11, I quit the, the restaurant and uh, by that time I was opening it up at six o'clock in the morning. And I would cook meals. And Opening the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I did that for about a year. And um, 
Anyway, I, I stopped working out and went home and I worked and I'd go to the bush. My brother would let me go into his bush. I could go into my dad's bush and cut pulp or stove wood or whatever. And mm -hmm. I'd sell that. I ended up making more money on the weekends than I was making in town. I was only making like 28 cents an hour in the restaurant, yeah. and, uh, but I got my meals. And that made it all worth it. Okay? I, um, near the end of grade 12, I discovered, uh, I was told by my principal that I didn't have the right subject selection to go to grade 13. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I had learned to like school and I was doing a whole lot better. You were motivated. M motivated, yes. making good marks. Yeah. And, uh, so I wanted to go to university. But because I didn't have the right subject selection, that didn't happen. And this was the end of June. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to find, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, here all of a sudden, I'm nothing in front of me. So one of the options at that time was uh, there was a desperate need for public school teachers. The baby boom after the war had flooded the schools. And so there was the opportunity, if one wanted, to go into teaching. I would never th consider teaching. I considered male teachers all sissies, so I had no intention of going into teaching. But in the meantime, I thought, I can go to summer school, I can teach for a year or two or whatever, and I can go back to school in, in the summertime and get upgraded so I can go to university. So off I go. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, my dad and I jumped in the car and we're going to look for a school. Imagine this in this day and age. You go looking for a school to be teaching by jumping in a car and driving down the road. Yeah. We drove down to Lannert, went into the uh, secretary there in Lannert, and were hired right on the spot. Just like that? Just like that. So I applied for summer school, and off I go to Toronto. Never been in the city before in my life. And uh, off we go to Toronto, and I'm going to summer school. Launched them as blazes in the big city. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Anyway, once I got into the group there in the school, it was fine. But I was learning to be a teacher. Yeah. On and so I taught. I went in there and survived. Yeah. Uh, the first few days must have been... I and you had multi-grades. It, oh, yes. it was just a one room. There were, there were five grades out of the eight that I was teaching. And I felt fine with all of the rest of them, but there was one little girl in grade two, and it broke my heart. I, I feel I failed her miserably. I was not a primary teacher. Mm -hmm. We were through the course of study probably by November. Yeah. And all I could do was start over again. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I failed her miserably. But uh, Anyway, then the next year, I went back to high school and uh, tried to pick up half of my high school. Mm -hmm. So then I got back into teaching, and... and uh, I went up to Golden Lake, which is west of Renfrew, yeah. and taught there for a year. And felt much more confident than the second year at Western. And like I say, it took 13 years to finish off my teaching cert certification and uh, my university degree. And in there, I spent a year at Teachers College, of course, mm -hmm. in Ottawa. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding, yeah. And that man. Yeah. Well, then back to this property. And Sandy, I um, brought her down here. I decided she was the girl for me. Yeah. So I brought her down here, and we left the car out the road, not right where your car left, down by the bridge there, at the old bridge. And uh, we walked in. I had already punched a lane in, a road in, but it was just mm -hmm. bulldozed. So we walked in, and we sat around here someplace, looked at the lake, and did a little wading in, and so on. And, I went back out to the road and got back in the car and I turned to her and I proposed to her. I said, if you think you could, I want to live here. I want to teach in the Perth area. Um, and you asked her on I, the spot. I asked her to marry me. And she said she'd be proud to. And, oh my uh, yeah. goodness. That's very romantic, but Well, yeah, she it blessed is. me. That was the yeah. second wonderful thing in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and come back to... Perth, uh, that was in August 26, 1961, and uh, we were, I started teaching in Bancroft on the first day of September, and we moved to Bancroft, and we rented an apartment there, and we moved up there. Our plan was to, we wouldn't have any kids for two or three years, so we got on our feet. Mm -hmm. 
And two years after we were married, Sandy was pregnant. And I'll never forget the glow on her face. <laughs> I always wondered whether this was kind of a, one uh, philosophy of one of the partners, or who knows. What, whatever, whatever. whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, she had our oldest daughter, Vicky, in Bancroft. Mm -hmm. And she had a job there. She was working in a woolen mill higher on. We wanted to come to Perth, and we tried to, uh, we were, I even phoned the principal, and I, he interviewed me, and he wanted to hire me. But the pay was pitiful. Landrick County was one of the two lowest paying areas in the province. Yeah. So we said, we can't do that. We have to get more money. We have a wife and a child. And yeah. So we took the Globe and Mail, and at that time, the Globe and Mail had the, the teacher section a whole section for teachers. The baby boomers had moved into the high school. Yeah, there was a big demand for teachers. There was a 12-page section in the mm -hmm. teachers section of salaries, and we didn't look at anything except salary in that 12 pages. Highest paying in the province, Iroquois Falls. And I bet you said, where on earth is that? Didn't know where it was. <laughs> looked it up on the map and phoned the principal up and was hired on the telephone. So I went, and now this was at the end of the public school panel yet. So I went to Erica Falls and we loved it there. Uh, I was in the public school panel, but I was interested in moving on to the high, high school. school. Yeah. <clears throat> so the third year we were there, I moved on to the high school panel and taught two years in the high school panel there before I came to Perth. <sighs> I kept saying to my family, oh, God, I want to buy that property. It was owned by... I, I, this is called Greenpoint. We right? called this it Greenpoint, Green Point. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, I want to buy this property, but Dad kept saying, Jimmy True Love never sold a piece of property in his life. He won't sell it. And I kept humming and hawing, and eventually I, I, I kept hesitating, but I didn't want to hear him say no. So I went down one time to see them, and they invited me in, and they always grabbed the pan as soon as you walked through the door or whatever, and mm -hmm. I ate two meals, told them why I was there. Well, buddy, he says, I'll think it all over. I'll think it all yeah. over. You told me. So um, away I went. He said, come back, and I come back, son, and I'll think it all over. So a week went by, and I went back. Well, he said, I haven't got time to have thinking. I think I'm not through thinking it all over yet. <laughs> so, uh, holding my breath as it were, away I went again. And I come back again two or three weeks later. I left it longer. And I went back and I said, uh, Are you going to sell me the property? He said, Well, I said, decided I would sell it to you. Oh, my God. It oh, was my. just. Um, and uh, I was so happy and so glad. Anyway, I had to go and borrow the money then. Yes. And uh, getting this house bought, and I bought an old log house. Uh, you couldn't believe it if you saw what the, this house looked like when I bought it. I think I paid $75 for it. Mm -hmm. And we took the top log off, it was rotten, and the bottom log, and, and replaced them. And my brother and I built the foundation. We had the bulldozer in and dug out the foundation and put in the footings and he put in the cement block walls. I worked with him. And then his son, 15-year-old son, and I went about bringing the logs down. I got my dad's tractor, the farm tractor and the hay wagon. And we rolled these big long logs on and brought them down. And somehow or other we got turned around in here and we put the logs back in place. Yeah. The thing is, um, I built a house, she built a home, something like that. Yeah. Um, Sandy was the, the spirit and the soul and the, mm -hmm. the beauty, the um, kindness. The, she's a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was life like here for you, together with your family? Beautiful. It was beautiful. It was, uh, what was Christmas like, for example? What did, well, we quite often would have people here, or we'd go to other people, you know. It, it, yeah. it was a typical Christmas. Uh, as long as her folks were alive, we'd go there and have probably have Christmas here in the morning for the yeah. kids, and then yeah. go in there. And it was pretty typical. Yeah. Uh, our lives were... The, the thing about being out here was we had a family life. 
Mm-hmm. And when we were in town, their friends lived next door, good kids, but they would ate off the table sort of thing. And mm-hmm. uh, you would sit down at the table to eat and there would be this nose pushed up against the screen door. Yeah. Can Cindy come out and play? <laughs> And you'd send them home and say, she will phone you mm-hmm. when she's ready. And they would go home and phone back. Can Cindy come out to play? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and the lake. See, Sandy's dad had a cottage up in Robertson's Lake. So Sandy's father had a cottage oh, okay. up in, on Robertson Lake. So, mm-hmm. and she loved it. Is so, that close by here? It's about 40 miles away. Oh, okay. So, um. So she was she was not unfamiliar with not, living on on a lake there. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. She loved yeah. it. She loved swimming, and uh, it was idyllic. Well, there were a few. Things. We paid a bit of a price, but as soon as we accepted the idea that we we're going to be off grid, she would organize her day so that when she turned the generator on in the morning, she would get everything done that day that she needed to do use mm-hmm. electricity for. Maybe three times in the day or twice, she would start it up and fill up the water tank. And, and the rest of the time, there was no problem at all. She had an electric washing machine, she had a fridge, and singing in the car coming home. Yeah. Uh, I, I well, you were singing milking cows when yes. you were a young boy, <laughs> so that's not so surprising. <laughs> I, we, I drove very small cars all my life. Uh, my theory was if you couldn't push it, it was too big for you. Mm-hmm. And I'd drive a small car, and if I got stuck, I'd just get out and push it over the snowbank or yeah. whatever and yeah. drive on. Uh, if you couldn't get up a hill you could, and slid in the ditch, you could push it out. Yeah. But I remember us numerous times, you'd be coming home or whatever, the three kids in the car, or the girls mostly before Tom was born, driving in and out the dorm road, singing in their hearts out. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it was a big part of your life then, as a Oh family. yeah, music, music was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I can play pretty near anything, but I can't play anything well. Um, so you do play piano? Uh, I, I, did. I can pick out a melody with one hand and chord with the other, yeah. but I'm no good at it. Yeah. If I worked at it, you would I, I do have good fingers yet, mm-hmm. but I pick, I pick on the guitar, I play the violin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on a little bit of a violin kick right now. Or, so then, it, it, you weren't unfortunately given too many more years together. Unfortunately. unfortunately. Can you talk about that, Bud? Uh, I, I want to include her. She is so much a part of the family and the history. This is her history. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she was such a key part of it that mm-hmm. to leave her out is to you can't leave deny her reality. You know? yeah. And it, the problem started in June of 1914. Um, I call 2014. It, 2014. 20, yeah. I mm-hmm. call it our from summer, our yeah. year from our summer from hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But anyway, they let her die uh, from the heart condition. Mm-hmm. I saw the last post. Mm-hmm. So that's Sandy's so, chapter. And, and so, what what did you do in your well, immediate? I went, I went uh, farming and. Uh, by the way, I became the biggest Van Alstein farmer there was. We used to have my dad there around 35 head of cattle. Oh I had 100, like I had 50 cows, 50 calves, 50 yearlings. Uh, so I, I have no idea if that was me trying to prove something mm-hmm. or not. Or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So you went back to what you started, I went back to your roots. And yeah. I was doing construction, like building yeah. and in the bush and whatever. Frank, uh, my brother-in-law and I went working. We were cutting cedar brush and we were cutting a lot of wood in the wintertime, stove wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, we worked another, I don't know, eight or ten years um, doing that sort of thing, um, making pretty good money. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe we quit a little early because we liked to have our beer at the end of the day, We'd sit down and have a beer and, yeah. and feel good. <laughs> You've had an extraordinary life. Thank it's you. Been interesting. Thank you very much, but and thank you. All the best to you. Thank you very much.